close your eyes. Go on. Now, I want you to imagine 65 million years ago, a sun rising on a brilliant, vibrant world. A home to many. Just about to start their day. That's really cool. A new aquatic ecosystem. That's sick. Throughout. Path of Titans is an MMO dinosaur video game. Play as a dinosaur in a rich ecosystem filled with complex AI creatures and up to 200 other human players. From smaller creatures like Camptosaurus to the giant Despletosaurus, discover the dinosaur that most appeals to you and complete quests and achievements to unlock new abilities and skins. Join a herd of other players and work together to complete goals that you may not be able to do on your own. If I didn't know what Path of Titans was like, I think that would make me really excited for this for this game or this update or whatever. Unfortunately, we all know what Path of Titans is like. Path of Titans is a game that I feel for me has been kind of a disappointment. I tried to give this game a chance, man. I did. I saw the trailer and was like, ooh, maybe the game won't be terrible for once and they're gonna actually enjoy it for the first time since early 2021. Big mistake on my part, because their hype beta release did nothing. And that's why I'm going to be talking about reasons I think this game is bad, because it is. Path of Titans is garbage right now in its current state. Out of all the dino games like Bob, The Isle, I would say that this one does the worst job when it comes to multiplayer and overall engagement. It's basically just early access, with the gameplay basically just Legacy Isle with a few differences here and there, most of which are not good. Like for example, Path of Titans prides itself as an MMO, but it barely has the stuff to call itself one, and the parts that are present can be pretty painful. Throughout the many hours I dedicated playing the game for the past few weeks, I have been noticing a detrimental pattern between the different mechanics within it that I believe contributes to a lesser experience, is slowly killing the game, and something that the other can learn from. And that problem is growth. Let's be honest, Just straight out, here's the topic for today's video, pod growth is bad. It's true. It sucks. And you can't tell me otherwise. The pod community knows it. My community knows it. <sighs> it's so disappointing seeing that. It's like you, you, you have your dinosaur, you're ready to log in and just have a blast. And then, you know, he just goes from adult to juvenile in an instant. And it just... It sucks all the hope out of your body, it really does. What this just blatantly says is that quests are the only thing that can grow you. And currently, that is... it's barely working. There are little side quests that you can do in the game. Like at the moment I have Fixed Dam. <laughs> this red marker on my screen is the location of that mission. Um, and why? Why am I fixing a dam? I don't know. I do not like their growth because it feels like a chore because you keep having to quest after quest after quest. And if it's a group quest, like if you've only done like a portion to help, you get like five seconds of growth. Again, it feels like a chore because you keep having to do it over and over again. The new map did make things interesting for a little while, but now, now it's back to the same old tedious gameplay loop of quest, 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 grow, die, quest, quest, grow, die. There's just not much to do. It's just that the fundamental quest system that's tied in to the grow system, it's just, it's too dull and boring right now in its current state. It, it does the opposite, immersing you into the environment around you. Instead, it just constantly reminds you that you need to get this done, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to, like it's just, it's just a chore simulator at this point. And that's my major issue with it. It's lifeless, boring, and repetitive. I'd have to say I found this game to be okay. The concept itself is very interesting, and it starts out great. Unfortunately, the game falls short. Quest lines are bugged and never complete. The world seems too big for the server size. I could never find anyone in the full server besides my friends. Gameplay is repetitive, 
Not all mods work and prevent you from joining games. You get to experience the vastness of the map. And what I mean by that is, you get to walk around in an empty area for about, I would say, 50 minutes to an hour without finding anybody. And when you do, it's only for a few brief seconds because they also have to go back to their fetch quest. You guys might be like, oh, your videos are always so short. They're only like 15 or 20 minutes. Well, I put hours into the game, not having fun trying to get that footage. And I just, I don't know why I'm putting up with that. And I hope that they understand the fact that not everybody has eight hours a day to grind on a fictional dinosaur. I mean, people have families that they need to attend to, you know? They have school, they have work, what, what have you. Surprising, I know, yes, dinosaur gamers do have lives outside of the screen. I've been playing Path of Tyrants for, for a long time now. And it's amazing to see this game get so far, but at the same time, just get down so low to the point where players are just stop playing it. But also to the point where people are starting to hate the game now. And I know they can do better than this, so right now, I'm ashamed of Path of Titans. This is the first time I'm saying it. Path of Titans is dog right now. I just, But I do want to see improvement, and I know it can do that. It has the potential to do it, and it can. Again, I want to see improvement. It can and it absolutely will. I've had this passion for so long, I can't be alone. And every time I talk to a friend saying, hey, you know, you like dinosaurs, what would you think about a dinosaur game? They always love the idea. And, um, you know, looking back at that, once I think of, hey, all of the kids are growing up today, they probably would love something similar. My thought is just make that game, make that game. At least <laughs> kids who are growing up who are super into dinosaurs, because often sometimes people grow out of it. None of us here, of course, but yeah. sometimes <laughs> kids will grow out of it. If they could have a really kick dinosaur game that they could play, they probably would never lose interest in dinosaurs. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> make the dinosaur phase go extinct <laughs> <laughs> also a great way to bring people back into their dinosaur phase that's true yeah what like what we're doing with Path the titans there's just some great gameplay loops and fun times to be had just being a dinosaur never mind the veneer of dinosaur over top you can actually get some pretty awesome gameplay content coming out of it as well you know yeah but yeah I even know. though t-rex isn't in right now i know that when he is at it people will like him but it's not like they'll be able to stomp around cause havoc and sort of ruin the game for everyone else right, right? like it's, right. it's really going to be a natural thing it's sort of like how if despletosaurus which is one of the tyrannosaurs that we will be adding when it is added to the game it's going to be you know it's quite small many people like playing him but it's not really going to disrupt our ecosystem to the point that people might be worried about you like but one thing i'm very interested in trying out no 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 um guarantees here but I'd love to play around with the idea of Microraptor being like the troll dinosaur. And what I mean by that is it's just, it's like a trickster and it can make dinosaur calls of creatures that, you know, it's heard before. So you could hear like a Microraptor makes a T-Rex sound oh, and kind of amazing. scares people and stuff like that. And it could fly around and it probably can't get hit. I love the idea of if people just want to bug other people, they go and play Microraptor. Uh, yeah, if you do that, that would probably be the one I play the most. <laughs> oh, Sabrina. <laughs> Path of Titans is one of many dinosaur survival games that have emerged and gained attention in recent years, alongside The Isle and Beasts of Bermuda. First released to PC and Mac in 2020, it has been in development as an early access title for over three years. There's still quite a lot of activity within the game, supported by the daily activities seen in the official subreddit, and many have publicly shown appreciation for the game.
However, it is also true that a large portion of the player base, or in this case what used to be the player base, have expressed frustration with the current state of the game, and in some cases have had long-time backers stop playing the game indefinitely. This becomes more apparent when the backers in question paid for the game for the potential to improve and grow in the future. It's actually kind of sad how how low that this game has stooped because I have been following this game for ages and I've only I have been following it longer than I've been making content on it and I have a lot of good memories playing this game. I've met a lot of amazing people through this game and it sucks that this is how it is now. Path of Titans really kicked off my channel in the very beginning and it's now kind of just sitting here just like me making videos about how I don't really like the game. Three years ago I have been playing Path of Titans pretty regularly for three years. That's quite a long time, really. But, yeah, I need a break. And I honestly, I just, I don't want to play Path of Titans right now. It's not fun. Adding new playables doesn't make it more fun. The new map did make things interesting for a little while, but now, now it's back to the same old tedious gameplay loop of quest, 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 grow, die, quest, quest, grow, die. There's just not much to do. Examining these posts and videos, in regards to gameplay, the frustration seems to mostly come from the long growth time from juvenile to adult stage of each playable species and the tediousness of the process necessary to do so. In regards to playstyles, other players targeting and killing juvenile players merely to annoy them by setting their progress back, known as KOS for kill on sight. Having a large pack of players made of both adult carnivores and adult herbivores banding together to kill individuals, juveniles in particular, for sport, known as mix packing, and the toxicity in the in-game chat that usually follow the aforementioned two events are often brought up as topics of discussion. While such frustrations can be categorized into what is often described as gameplay loop, and player-based toxicity and seem to be resolvable by quote-unquote fixing the gameplay loop and setting up community servers that enforce stricter rules for mixpacking and KOSing, it can be argued that there are flaws in implementations and concepts that are much more fundamental in the Path of Titans game design. MVP Minimum Viable Product This is a concept in software engineering pipelines such as those seen in game development where an extremely simplified version of an idea or concept for a game is realized for testing. From the description, this can easily be mistaken for prototyping. A minimum viable product is much, much simpler than a prototype. Placeholder assets are often reduced to primitives, such as cylinders, spheres, or cuboids. There are neither sounds nor textures. It is often unrecognizable from the final product and unpresentable to the public. In development, there's a term called minimum viable product, which refers to the smallest thing you can possibly make that'll still give you useful data once released. That should be your goal. Even when James is called in to work on a multi-million dollar project that has a development time of three years, one of the first things he'll tell them is that if they don't have a prototype up in the first three weeks, they're doing it wrong. Let's run through some examples so we're all on the same footing. Let's start with Super Mario Brothers. What do we need in order to test if the fundamental gameplay of Super Mario Bros. is engaging? What's the minimum that we can build and test before deciding if what we have is something worth expanding upon with additional features? Well, for Mario, the minimum viable product is probably one level where you can move, jump, and fall into pits. That's it. If just that much is engaging, you'll be able to add all those other features later and make it even better. But if running along and jumping over pits doesn't feel good, Super Mario Bros. simply doesn't work, no matter how many extra features you throw in. So you've got to make sure that that core is working first. So I actually think making MVPs for original games is extremely difficult, which is why we don't do that. We build, this is my term, uh, the minimum crappy playable, the MCP. So this is, it's not full featured, it's a piece of crap. 
but if you don't start with making something crappy, you, you're just gonna be frozen, or at least I'm always paralyzed. So, you know, it's, it's a heady endeavor to create a game. But if you just create something crappy, just something crappy that's playable, okay, done. Uh, it gets you moving. It gives you permission, permission to make something crappy and start, you know, the wheels start turning. And the amazing thing about making an MCP um, is that something that, turn, that starts like this, which are the first, and I would say MCPs for Subnautica, eventually turn into something like this. Just like that skateboard and car. It's the same process. Whether the minimum viable product feels fun to play or not, lays the foundation to the rest of the game development. Failure of testing and scrapping ideas in this stage may dictate the life or death of the game. It's really easy to get mired down in making all of that content. And the truth is, games with lots of content but without a solid foundation are rarely good. Perhaps worse, as a creator, when your game's packed with content, it's generally harder to figure out why the foundation's not working. If you test your prototype with a lot of content thrown in, it'll be harder for players to put their fingers on exactly what it is that needs improvement, as all of that content just clutters what's wrong, and they'll be more likely to tell you about bad pieces of content rather than the underlying reasons why that content didn't create a positive experience. It just adds complexity in a situation where you really need to be honing your game's core foundation. The minimum viable product for Path of Titans would look like the following. There is the general forward, backward, and sideways movement, the occasional E-pressing to pick up acorns, and the stationary mouse clicking that allows the mesh of your character to overlap with those of the external character and deal damage to it. Before I share the demo, here are some disclosures. This is dull to play. This isn't to say that the minimum viable product in Path of Titans isn't without any strengths. I like the way this dude runs. It's kind of funny. It's weird because he feels heavy even though he's a pterosaur. That's one thing I've always loved about Path of Titans. The sense of scale in this game is so much better than... I mean, it's a lot better than Beast of Bermuda's sense of scale, and it's actually better than the Isle's sense of scale too. Even like the little guys that you play as in this game, everything feels pretty sizable as they should. I mean, they're freaking dinosaurs. However, there are elements that would leave an impression of boring gameplay to the players. The movement of my character feels static. While this is merely an example of a minimum viable product, the mechanics are basically the same as the main game, if a model of an archosaur and animations are added. For example, neither the sense of speed nor weight are conveyed. The so-called fighting with the enemies is not satisfying. Whenever I attack, I do not feel like I'm actually making much impact on the objects around me. The pacing is all over the place. In most games, the downtime between fights are filled with storytelling like in Bioshock Infinite, That's 
her. Upgrades in the player's character, such as the customization in Monster Hunter Rise. I'm upgrade that. I'm gonna. I might. I might just use that. All right. Excellent. Or some other form of progression, such as mining and deep rock galactic. Nitra. What? Oh. <laughs> Nitra. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm in like a new cave. Oh damn! Okay. Inventory is full. I need the damn minecart on legs. Where is it? In the case of Path of Titans, while customization is not implemented in my demo, players would collect acorns or berries for hours to grant themselves more growth for their character, new abilities, and the means of obtaining new skins. The slow progression spanning over multiple downtimes and potential fights would give the players little sense of progress and make room for little to no short term goals. It should be noted that an overhaul in existing quests, which is a solution proposed by a large portion of the player base, is likely not sufficient to solve this issue. Because as mentioned before, since the minimum viable product lays the foundation of the structure of the game and the experience that players can gain from it as a whole. For example, if AI boss fight quests were added to the game, while there would be something for players to do, a lack of satisfying combat mechanic on a fundamental level would likely leave the players with a lackluster feeling. The dual sense in gameplay that can be experienced from the aforementioned points can result in the players feeling as if there is nothing to do in the game. The dual sense in gameplay experienced from the aforementioned points can lead to toxic behavior in the community, especially KOS and the global chat that follows the event, since it can result in the players feeling as if there is nothing to do in the game, resulting in them doing the only thing that makes them feel like they're impacting the players around them at their expense. The aforementioned problems may be alleviated by altering some of the mechanics in the minimum viable product. One solution can be dynamically adjusting the field of view in proportion to the velocity of the characters to give a sense of speed to the players when they run towards another player, for example. Another more ambitious alteration may be to make the fights more physics based. Charge attacks from herbivorous animals such as the Ceratopsians can produce damage proportional to the impulse force upon impact with another dinosaur. The enemy character can do a stumble animation similar to those seen in Left 4 Dead 2 with a specific type of zombie called the Charger. However, the latter solution, having overwritten the entirety of the combat mechanics in the game, would require an overhaul of rebalancing damage and health for every playable Archosaur in the game. This is highlighted with the combat update regarding Pachycephalosaurus, which has a knockback attack that physically pushes over players. Such problems largely emphasize the importance of establishing a satisfying minimum viable product early in the development pipeline. It is extremely difficult to smoothly implement changes in the low level mechanics after early access releases. While the combat update is on the horizon, it may not fix the aforementioned issues without making little changes or potentially breaking the game. As for the pacing and progression, having such fundamental problems with the adopted mechanism 
drastic measures such as scrapping the idea altogether may be necessary for a fix that will leave a meaningful impression on the players. Again, while the quest overhaul is coming soon, it may be too little and too late to take control of the pacing. Was Path of Titans doomed to fail from the beginning? With such fundamental and possibly fatal flaws in the game design, it would be reasonable for one to conclude that Path of Titans may not take the throne of becoming quote unquote the best dinosaur game in the market. However, I do believe that there is one more card that can be played recognizing and establishing the strength of the game. Looking at the emergent gameplay from the players, it seems that they're having the most fun from passively interacting with other players and making friends. Although this is beyond the scope of this video essay, it may be worthwhile to examine how such player interaction can occur and attempt to implement features that strengthen such aspects. One solution may be to completely embrace the mix packing behavior from the players and allow them to make their own groups. Mix pack groups could have some sort of a debuff and damage toward other players or stamina. If mix packed groups were to emerge, their location could be indicated on the map so that juvenile or solo players could avoid them. If one were to attempt to minimize the number of mix packers in the game, Perhaps a mechanism where, if both carnivorous and herbivorous animals were seen to be in the same general area without any sign of hostility for a certain amount of time, a zone in which damage from player to player would be set to zero. This would force the players in the zone to be friendly to each other, possibly recreating the water truth scene from Prehistoric Planet Season 1, Deserts. Regardless, it is our hope that the developers of Path of Titans would be able to find and implement a solution that could enhance the experience of the game 